Hey guys, this is Edmund Tavern, and today I'm going to show you how to create a baseball in Blender. This tutorial is based on a tutorial by Alex Chapper, who created it originally for Maya, and it can be watched on Alex's YouTube channel. Alex used this stitch pattern uh, for his tutorial that was created by Jerry Mills, and it can be downloaded from Jerry's Divine Art page. And Jerry kindly allowed me to use his pattern for my, for my tutorial as well. So without further ado, let's dive into Blender and let's create a baseball. Okay, um, before we start off, I'd like to change some settings here. Uh, by default, the unselected edge and vertex is black. And since we're going to work against the dark background, I'd like to change the colors. So let's do this. Go to Edit Menu, Preferences, and select Themes. Scale this up a bit. Go to 3D View and search for the field Wire. Click into it, change the value, and pick a nice color like green. Um, the same for the Wire Edit. Control, Copy, V. And for the Vertex, change the value and change it to pink. Okay, now select all items here and delete them. Now we have to load in our reference image. Um, this is the original reference image and um, I have cropped it down a bit so we're just using uh, only this stuff below the red line and I ended up with something like this. And to load it into Blender, simply drag and drop it into the viewport. Select it with a left click and Alt R, Alt G, clear rotation and location. Go to top view. Now we need to make the grid lines visible. Um, go to, yeah, here, image properties, object data, and toggle this on, use alpha and drag this down like so. Now what we're going to do, we're going to align the center of this pattern to the center of our viewport. Um, to do this, move it to the right on the x-axis, approximately to the center like so, and move it up a bit along the y-axis like so. Okay, now we need to make the pivot point the 3D cursor um, and to do this we can click either here and selecting 3D cursor or we can press it, uh, the period key and select 3D cursor from the pie menu and now we can scale along the 3D cursor and this is perfectly fine so let's scale it up a bit until uh, our pattern line matches up with the grid line here on the right and on the left. Like so. And the same on the y-axis. Oh, scale it up. Do not constrain to the y-axis because this will distort your image. I want to I want to scale it up the way that it the line meets up here lines up here with the um, grid line of the fourth square so one two three four and scale it up like so cool okay and now to keep our settings here and um, prevent ourselves from accidentally changing this object, um, go to the outliner and uh, toggle off uh, uh, the selectability. So there is no arrow here, but we can bring it back by clicking on the filter icon and picking the arrow. And now we can toggle it off. Now we cannot select it anymore and this is perfect. Cool. So. Um, 
Control S to save our file, since Blender is still better. That's a good idea. Date of today and title baseball tutorial. Save. So in the next step, I'd like to count the stitches. So when I'm uh, talking about a certain vertex, I can give you a clear reference uh, what vertex I'm talking about. So let's do this real quick. I'll go to the grease pencil and count the stitches. So one, two, three, four, five, six, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, and 25. All right, now let's add some geometry. Go back to the select tool and let's add a circle. Go down here and change the vertex count to 84. Grab the circle and move it on the x-axis to the right until it lines up with the line here of the stitch pattern. Like so. Go into edit mode, select this vertex and shift S, select uh, the cursor and or snap the cursor to the uh, selected vertex and change the pivot point to the vertex, uh, to the 3D cursor, excuse me, um, but it is already. so. Select all vertices and now scale it down until the curvature of the circle means the cur meets the curvature of our pattern, like so. Yeah, this is cool. So now we have one vertex on top of each stitch and one in between, and this is exactly what we need. So, with all vertices selected, let's um, bring back the 3D cursor to the center, so Shift S, cursor to select it, tap out of edit mode, and now we're going to snap the origin to the 3D cursor, set origin to 3D cursor, and what I'd like to do is, um, I'd like to add this to the new quick favorites menu, since we're going to do this a few times, um, and to do this I'd like to, so you have to right click on it, and add it to Quick Favorites. And now we can call the Quick Favorites menu by pressing the Q key and simply clicking on it. Perfect. Now tap in Edit Mode again. Select the vertices from stitch 15 to uh, below the stitch 25 and Control i Invert Selection and get rid of all of these vertices here and select this guy here, extrude it to the left and drop it somewhere here. Press N and check this guy here, global, and change the global X value of this vertex to zero because I want it to be aligned up perfectly with the Y axis <clears throat> and move it up like so. Cool. Now what we're going to do, we're going to add some more geometry here. So we need one vertex on top of each stitch and one in between. This means per stitch we need two vertices and we have 14 stitches. So we need 14 times 2, 28 vertices. So control R and type in 28. And now we're gonna push these vertices into shape uh, with the lattice. And to do this we need a vertex group, so create a vertex group here, plus vertex group, and assign the selected vertices to it by clicking on assign, deselect, select, check whether it worked, and it worked, so we can select this vertex here and snap the cursor to it. Shift S, cursor to select it. Tap out of edit mode and Shift A, add a lattice. Now we need to align the lattice the way that it, um, that the bottom left corner is lined up with the 3D cursor here. So grab the lattice on the 
x-axis 0.5 and grab it on the y-axis 0.5 and I'll turn on the snap tool here select vertex and select scale because now we're going to use it with the scale operator and now scale it on the x-axis until it snaps to the vertex on stitch 15 like so and the same on the y-axis oh scale it on the x-axis like so and scale it on the y-axis like so okay now we need more control points for the lattice so we increase the resolution here about seven and since we don't need this third dimension um, we can drag this to one select the mesh and go to modifier add a modifier lattice select the lattice object and our vertex group and now with the lattice selected tap into edit mode and now we can move the control points and change the shape of our mesh turn off uh, snap and now let's move from work from right to left by adjusting the shape like so Like so. Okay. Hide the lattice, check the shape. Okay, this is a bit off, but we can adjust it manually in edit mode. Select this guy here, apply lattice, bring the lattice back, select it and delete it. Okay, now select the mesh again and select this vertex and adjust the vertices a bit. Like so. Okay, control S save. And now what we're gonna do, we're gonna extrude uh, these vertices to the inside so we get some geometry here. And to do to do this we select first vertex on uh, stitch 15 and down here to this vertex, the whole row. Um, um, tap out. We have to place the 3D cursor here, cursor to select it, and now again, pivot point is the 3D cursor, and now we can extrude it and scale it in until our vertex row is slightly beyond the stitch holes, like so. Extrude it one more time, scale it in, way down, until the top of this arc is approximately on this height. So down like so extrude one more time scale in and press O enter now we need to re remove the doubles here because we have uh, some vertices on top of each other and to do this we can go uh, we have to right click here and select merge vertices and we can go by distance and I would like to add this again to uh, my quick favorites menu so right click add to quick favorites and now i can press q and select by distance and down here you can see that 21 vertices have been removed cool uh, i think in the previous blender versions it was here it was up here 
the information field and um, these guys here as well they were up here okay now turn on snap select the whole row down here and extrude it down extrude it on the y-axis and snap it to this vertex here turn off snap extrude it on the y-axis drop it somewhere here and scale it on the y-axis down so snap again grab up y like so so it lines up here extrude again y like so and now we can close the gap here by adding faces like so so now shift c to go into wireframe mode and control r to add an edge loop and now we add 11 edge loops And the next step, what we're going to do, we're going to quad out these triangles here. And for that, we need to find, um, we need to find the center vertex line. So we have 21 vertices here, and we need the 11th vertex. So it's the one between 20 and 21. If we select these guys here, we have 11 vertices. This means this is the center line and select the vertices on it okay oh and control e mark seam not to unwrap it but to make it visible yeah and here as well control e mark seam it doesn't want to do that Let's do it one more time. Control E, mark seam. Okay. So now um, we have uh, one, two, three, four. We have nine vertices on this uh, edge to the right. And now we want to connect the center line vertices with the outer line vertices. And we need to find the corresponding edge. So to find this edge, we need to count the vertices down here from this point. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So this means this guy here should be connected with this one. So this is the corresponding uh, vertex row. And select it, control E, mark C, and the same up here, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Nine, control E, mark seam. Like so. Now bring up the knife tool and let's create some cuts here. Same on the left side.
hope this worked. Let's zoom in here. Take a look, yeah. Okay. And now we have to switch to edge select mode. And to do this, we can click right here. Or we can press number two on the keyboard. Or number one for vertex, number two for edge, and number three for face select. Or we can shift, shift press one, two to activate all three at once. But since we need only edge select, so press here. And now we're going to select all edges. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, we're going to select all edges, um, pointing from the center to the to these lines here. So select this guy here with Shift Alt click, and work. missed but I think we got all of them um, okay press delete and select dissolve edges now we can see that uh, we need to delete the center line here as well so select all edges control E to remove the seam and select the center line. I removed the seam because now it's better visible. And delete it. Delete and dissolve edges. Cool. Now we have one triangle left here. Um, switch to vertex select mode by pressing 1. And we need to split this here. So select the vertex down here and press V, disable snap, and grab this guy here, no, disable snap, and grab this guy here to the left, no, the other one, grab X, like so. Yep. And now go here, select this vertex, Shift S, cursor to select it, and select the whole row here to, to this vertex and rotate it away from this edge. Rotate. Like so. Maybe press G twice to perform an edge slide and move this guy here to the left. The same. Okay, now edge select mode again and delete this edge. Oh, not dissolve, delete it. And select these edges here and make a face. Like so. Maybe. Edge slide this a bit, and this guy here as well. Like so. Okay, and now in the final step, go to face select mode and select the faces over here. Just like these guys. And now we're going to smooth them out by pressing Ctrl V and selecting smooth vertices and change the repeat factor to something about 8, maybe 10. Like so. Okay, maybe undo this. Select and Select these guys here as well. And now control E. Control V, excuse me. Smooth vertices. Yes, that's okay. Okay now. 
um, control S save and now let's reorganize this thing a bit go to the outliner and we have a collection here this is the replacement for the layer system so now we uh, layers are now called collections and um, the big advantage is that we can have um, as far as I know an infinite number of collections or layers so we can rename it to mesh and the circle we can rename to patch and the empty we can rename to reference image or ref image to keep ref image one to keep the name um, short and for the reference image we create a collection new collection rename it to reference and now simply select the reference image and drag it down and now it's here and we can toggle it on and off this is good okay control s save and now in the next step uh, we're gonna model the stitch here and uh, Right, this for now if you take a look at the stitches here they move from the top left to the bottom right and the reference moves from the top right to the bottom left so in the opposite direction and what I'm going to do I'm going to duplicate this reference image and scale it on the x-axis and minus one direction to flip it horizontally so shift D and scale it x-axis minus one now I can hide reference image one and select this guy here and rename it to reference image two and toggle visibility here for one. And now this is what I want. I have the desired direction of my stitch. Now move it to the right until it lines up here. And move it down so the center is right here between or the uh, the x-axis is uh, right between the two stitches like so okay relocate the uh, 3d cursor shift C and add a plane Go to edit mode, grab it on the x-axis 1 and grab it on the y-axis minus 1 and scale it way down like so. Further like so and scale it on the y-axis up a bit so it uh, encloses the stitch hole. Maybe a bit more. Like so. Okay. Uh, go to vertex select mode and let's add some geometry here. Bring up the knife tool and constrain it to the horizontal axis and make a cut. And again. another construction line maybe right here and like so 
And now we can create a circle by connecting the edges here. Okay. Delete this vertex and delete this center line, our uh, construction line, but dissolve it, dissolve edges. Now arrange the vertices here so they match up approximately our stitch hole. Like so. And select these vertices here. Move this guy a bit out. Like so select the vertices and extrude them. Scale, okay. Um, change the pivot point to bounding box and scale them down in. Like so. Now we need to add two more cuts parallel to the center one, to this one. And let's add some more cuts here. And again, one here. Now let's move these guys in by selecting and double pressing G. So we perform a vertex slide along the edge. Cut tool again. Cut these guys here in. Same on the right side. Now delete and dissolve edges so we get rid of the triangles and move in these guys here. Like so. Okay. Now select these these vertices here and grab them down the z-axis and these guys here as well. Oops. No. Grab z. And grab these guys here and move them up. These guys here as well. Like so. Maybe these guys here, even a bit more. drag this back like so maybe to see what we're doing let's add a subdivision modifier go to solid view and shade smooth Okay, and now let's select these guys here and move them down. And these guys further up. I like this uh, when it is 
bit bumpy. Maybe drag these guys up as well. Okay. Oh, not perfect, but it's okay. So now go here and select the circle here and rotate it on the x axis. So extrude it in, extrude it down, scale it in a bit, and wrap it up and extrude it. Like so. Okay. And no, th this is the place the hole will uh, host the thread and it will move this way around and rest in here. Okay, now to add the thread, we, uh, we snap our cursor to this hole, Shift S cursor to select it, and Shift A. Add a curve, a Bezier curve, and what we're gonna do? We're gonna extrude a uh, shape along this curve. So seven, rotate ninety, side view, rotate y ninety minus, and since we need to, uh, we need the origin to stay here because later on we're gonna rotate it. We tap into edit mode and select all edges or all handles and scale it down and move it into place like so rotate scan down and here as well grab rotate scale down and select both and subdivide them so right click subdivide and we make two cuts and now the normals are pretty distracting so to turn them off just simply go up here um, and curve edit mode turn off normals okay now we add the profile circle scale it in and select the curve again Go to the object data. Um, no, go to um, object data here and go to geometry and select, go to bevel and select our circle. Select the circle and scale it down. Yep. Way down. Okay, and now go to wireframe mode and you can see that there is a lot of geometry here. If we would convert it to a mesh, we, all these intersections would be vertices and this is far, far too much. So to decrease this, we need to turn down the resolution a bit, maybe to three on the curve and on the circle. So three, three. Maybe even less, two. This is okay. And on the on the curve we have three, two. Like so, let's keep it at three. Okay. 
no, go to side view, and now let's maybe play a bit with the handles here. and select the 3D cursor as pivot point and select the curve and rotate it until it matches our, our geometry here, like so. Okay, um, this is it. So we need to convert um, this curve to a mesh and to do this, um, we go to Object, Convert to, and Curve, Mesh from Curve. And now the curve has disappeared, and if we go into Edit Mode, we can see we have vertices, we have a perfectly fine mesh. Now to shape it a bit, select the loop down here, press O, for proportional editing on, and now let's scale. Uh, get the pivot point to bounding box center and scale it on the x axis, on the local x axis down. Maybe let's do this from top view, like so. Scale it on the the local z-axis, scale it out a bit and grab it on the local x-axis in. Like so. Maybe select this edge loop here and scale it up a bit. And this one here as well. This one here as well. I'll select the edge loop down here and scale it on the local x axis and grab it in, like so. Yeah, this is cool. Uh, control S, save, and now select the thread and select our leather and join them. Control J, join. Um, get rid of the subdivision modifier and I'd like to change this a bit. So I'd like to select the circle here and let's create a new collection. So M, new collection, and temp, I call it temp for temp stuff, and move the circle to it. So I like to uh, keep, keep things organized and uh, in case I would need it later on to uh, put it to a different layer. And now I can toggle it off. And this is cool. Okay, now patch and now Select the plane and rename it to Stitch. And move it to the mesh layer. Like so. All right. Um, the numbers, we don't need them anymore. So go to View, Notations, and disable it. OK. Now, what we're going to do next is we're going to mirror the patch on the y and x axis, and um, then we're going to add an array modifier 
to the stitch and we're going to create 100 stitches and shape them along the outline of our patch here. So let's do the mirroring first. Hide the stitch, select the patch and add a mirror modifier. Mirror. And now it's mirroring uh, a strange way because our center is here so we need to reset the center uh, the origin of um, this object to the uh, center here to the um, yeah to the viewport center so uh, relocate the 3d cursor by shift c and q origin to 3d cursor and now it works perfectly fine um, Select Y, turn on clipping, and now we have a finished patch. Rename this guy to patch one. Shift D, duplicate it, and rename this guy to patch two. And hide it. Maybe select patch one, shift D, duplicate it, and move it to temp. All right, um, now let's uh, apply the mirror modifier on patch one and hide it, unhide the stitch, select it and add an array modifier to it. A vertex count 100. Well, plenty of stitches merge. Okay, I'll go back to the patch, unhide it, hide the stitch, go to edit mode, and now select the outer row here, shift D, duplicate it, and part it um, from the object here by pressing P, selection, tap out, and now we have a, a patch outline and call it a stitch curve. stitch curve and convert it to a curve so this is because this is a mesh object with vertices and we want it to be a curve go to object convert to maybe we have no so we don't have it here so object convert to curve from mesh and now is it Did it work? Turn on, maybe go, go down here, turn on the handles. Oh yeah. Okay. Now select the stitch and add another modifier to it, a curve modifier. Go down here and select stitch curve. And now it, it's being deformed along the curve shape. So it's pretty cool. Go to edit mode and turn on this guy here so we can see it while we're editing. Now select all of these vertices here, make the pivot point the 3D cursor and make sure the 3D cursor is here. So it's in the center of the viewport. And I'll scale it down here. I'll turn off proportional editing and scale this guy down here until these two ends meet up. So go to wireframe mode and now scale this guy in further in as precisely as possible. Scale it in maybe even further like so. Okay, and now if we take a close look at our reference image, we can see that our uh, stitches are pointing to the outside and they should be pointing to the inside. 
And we can fix this real quick by selecting the curve, our stitch curve, going to edit mode and selecting all control points. I'll, I'll, I, th I don't know whether I need to select all control points, but I do it. And um, right click and switch direction. And now the stitches are pointing the proper way. Now shift D and select this guy. And this is stitch two. And this guy here is stitch one. Hide stitch two. And now let's take care of the patch. Hide stitch one maybe for now. Select the patch and select these two loops and delete them. Delete vertices. Bring back stitch one. Select it and apply the array modifier and the curve modifier. Go into edit mode and make sure that these vertices are selected. Now Q by distance, so remove doubles and eight vertices have been removed and this is perfect. Okay. Tap out, shift select the patch and control J to join them. Now go to edit mode again, select this edge loop and this edge loop and now control E and bridge edge loops. And now uh, what happened here is that our our uh, edge loops have been twisted somehow. So this is because uh, the normals of the either the stitches or the um, patch weren't pointing to the uh, same direction. So we need to fix that. Undo this. Select the patch by hovering over it and pressing L. And now let's make the normals visible. And you can see that the normals are pointing down and they should point up. So flip normals, we go to face, mesh, normals here, mesh normals, alt n, flip. And now they're pointing to the right direction. Go down here and disable them. Go to top view, select the edge loops. Oh. So, and control E, bridge loops. Perfect, patch one is finished. And now let's do the same with patch two. Bring it back. We can already delete, select it and delete this guy here. So, ah, we have to apply the mirror modifier. Okay. Select these two guys. Oh. And delete the vertices. Bring back stitch two. Select stitch two. And uh, now we need to change a little bit of stitch two because uh, stitch two is pointing to the same direction as stitch one. And uh, when we um, create the second patch and we would put it together, then um, the stitches would align up and the, they would lie on the same line here so they wouldn't point um, uh, towards each other and they wouldn't form up this arrow shape and to do this we need to um, scale the stitch on the x-axis so it's pointing in a different direction so scale x minus one and this is it go to add modifier Maybe 
shift before we apply the modifiers shift D and move it to temp okay we have patch one all right so all necessary stuff is here and select this guy and apply apply go to edit mode and merge the vertices here by distance eight vertices very good now shift select the patch control J to join them go to edit mode and select the edge loops and control E bridge edge loops and here it worked so the normals were pointing to the right direction okay and this patch 2 is finished Stitch curve can be moved to temp and control S. So on the next step, we're gonna add a curvature to this patch. So, so we bring it into shape. We're gonna bend it along the X axis and on the Y axis that way. And to do this, we need a Bezier circle with a diameter of the baseball that these patches will form up and to find the diameter we need the circumference so the circumference is uh, a sum of the distance between this point and this point and this point and this point so we have to measure it okay if we check this guy here so this is the measure tool and we go here and drag click over here and we get the length of this distance so 4.47 and x and the distance between these two points drag click is point, point 0.8 so we need to add a circle shift a circle and create the dimension um, 4.47 oh my 4.48 plus 4 uh, 0.8 divided by pi 3.14 equals the diameter and let's copy control copy control V and now we have the proper uh, diameter of this circle so we can give this a nice curvature all right control a apply scale and now let's select the patch maybe let's work with patch one first select this guy here and shift D duplicate it and rename this to curvature one and this guy here to curvature two Okay, height coverage two, we have coverage one and the patch one. All right, select patch one, go to modifier and add curve. Now select our coverage one and pick the right deformation axis. So I do this by trial and error. Well, this was the right one. So now it's being bent on its uh, local x-axis you can see that go to solid view and you can see that there are some uh, jagged edges and this is because the resolution of the circle is too long and to change this we have to increase this value because if it's too low this will end up really strange 
Um, so increase this up maybe even more, 128. And select the patch, shift S, shade smooth. Okay, this is cool. And now what I want to show you is uh, select the curvature and the um, the patch, rotate it on the x-axis 90 degrees plus or minus 90 degrees and rotate it on the z-axis 90 degrees and go to top view. And if you take a close look at the uh, outline of our reference image and at the shape of our patch, you see that it has been squeezed on its x-axis. And it took, me a it took me a time to find out why. Uh, this is because the Bezier circle here has uh, changed its uh, mean radius somehow. So while we were scaling this around, the mean radius were, was uh, changed and we need to change it back to 1. And if we do this, 1, go to top view, we can see that uh, our patch is now perfectly fine aligned with this uh, uh, reference image. Okay, so now let's, uh, we have to reset the origin. So go to top view, select the patch, go to, oh no, we have to apply the curve modifier first. So go here and apply the modifier, go to top view, select the vertex here on the top and shift S cursor to select it. Go to object mode Q and origin to 3D cursor. And now we have can select the patch and Alt G clear location. Okay. Now we have to add another modifier to it. Curve modifier and select curvature one. And again, try the deformation axis. And now we have the right one. And now we have uh, one half of our baseball. If you take a close look here, you can see that it has been squeezed again, but uh, we will fix that in polish face at the end. So now hide, curvature one, and patch one, and bring back patch two and curvature two. And now let's um, redo, repeat the steps. So hide the reference image, we don't need this anymore. Select the patch, add modifier, curve, select curvature 2, change the resolution, smooth, um, select this guy here, change the mean radius back to 1, important, And we can apply the modifier. Apply, recenter the origin. Shift S cursor to select it. Q origin to 3D cursor, Alt G to clear location. And again, add a modifier, curve and object curvature 2. Like so. Okay, the other half of the baseball is finished. And now we bring them together. So bring back curvature one and bring back patch one. And now select curvature one and patch one and rotate it on the x axis. Oh, shift C. And rotate it on the x axis 90 degrees minus direction. I can see that our baseball is almost finished. I'll select curvature 1 and curvature 2 and now let's scale them simultaneously until the edges here line up or 
close the gap. Okay. And due to this mesh was squeezed here, we need to uh, drag out uh, these vertices up here so that the stitches line up with the stitches down here. And we have to do this for all gaps here. So there are plenty of gaps. But first, now select both, Shift D, and move them to temp. Select this patch here, apply the modifier, this patch, apply the modifier, select curvature 1 and curvature 2, and move them to temp. Control S save. And now I want to close the gaps. So to do this, we need to change the global transform orientation and change it to view and the transformation to move so we can see the uh, axis when we select and change the pivot point to bounding box center and I, I like so yeah and now I know I'd like to change the orbits orbit style um, I go to edit preferences and viewport no no interface no themes no viewport no lights no editing 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 no where is it come on here orbit method uh, from turntable to trackball so then the alignment works better now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna align um, the gap uh, the way that I'm looking dead on it so dead on top of the edge here and now I'm gonna drag out the vertices of the stitches down here by selecting them and activating proportional editing tool and grab y-axis increase increase the influence and drag them down like so even further down maybe out a bit here as well down and try to align the uh, the 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 y-axis of your view to the uh, to the gap here so grab it down and move it in tap out maybe move it in further here as well grab X move it in and move it out here grab X like so Like so. And now let's do the same on the other side because they are squeezed in here. So go here and select these guys here and drag them up. So, and move them in. Drag them 
up. Grab X, move them in. Um, switch back to uh, object mode from time to time to check the gaps, whether they are closed properly. Here as well. Move this guy up. And in a bit. Like so. Maybe like these guys here. And move them down a bit. Okay, now two gaps are closed and there are six left, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to switch to fast forward and uh, come back to you when I'm done. So, stay tuned. Okay, uh, we're done. Um, so uh, what we can do in the final steps, we can join the meshes together. So select patch one, shift select patch two and control J. Rename patch two to baseball mesh or just baseball. And to, uh, to make sure there is no uh, light passing through uh, when adding light sources and so on, um, let's add a core to it. So Shift C and Shift A, add a sphere, mesh, uh, an icosphere. Change the count to four, shade smooth and scale it down. Scale it further down until it disappears inside of our baseball further down. Okay, and rename the icosphere to baseball or core and parent it to the baseball mesh. So control P, parent to object. And if I select the baseball, I move it around, okay, and move it to the um, to the mesh collection. Can I move it? Okay. Like so, okay, okay. Um, shift C. No, um, we're done. Uh, it was a quite long tutorial, uh, one hour over one hour and uh, twenty minutes. But um, I, uh, I hope you 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 got something out of this. You learned one or two things, and uh, go on create your own baseball, and uh, keep on creating cool stuff. Cheers, guys. See you.